Hello and welcome to the great show on earth. It is the Seagull Social Podcast and I'm your host Maz and of course I'm joined by Ben and Ryan and it is episode, no, season three, episode one. Look at that, Yes, boys. it is. Mad. We made it. Pleasure, Do you know what? Look around. Pleasure to be back. Look around, guys. How beautiful it is. Look. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got, look at oh, this. Lovely. Beautiful. beautiful. Can you see the new graphics? New, 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 new so nice. templates. Yeah. <laughs> he looks all right. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell? We've had a little glow up. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> yeah, not not us, but the templates. Um, no, yeah, Ryan, sure. how, how are you doing? I know you're, you're a little bit, um, you're a little bit COVID-y at the moment. So you, yeah, are you holding up all right? Me. Yeah, yeah, all good. No, fantastic, man. <laughs> at least Brighton won eight. Like that's the one good thing at the minute. Uh, there you yes, go. Mate. How about you, boys? Yeah, to che- cheer you up a little bit. Yeah, I- yeah I'm alright, sure. mate. I'm alright. Ben, how-, how are you? Yeah, hungover as fuck. I went out to. So I was out. What a surprise! After the game, season three, nothing's changed. <laughs> we we'll, we'll lose or draw. We are going out, and uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a great night. Ended up in Shush. Uh, <laughs> to the crack of dawn, y'all. Yeah, it's good fun. Oh, did you see uh, Aaron Aaron Connolly in Chooch? No, or? no, I didn't. No, no, no. He's, uh, He's right a, out in Venice. I too guess, busy in Venice. Yeah, too busy. Yeah, living, in Venice, his, living his new life. Girls. Yeah. What about you, man? No, you nice. Said, haven't you? Uh, yeah, no, yeah. I, I haven't really been up too much. Just had a chilled run. Obviously, watched Brighton on, on uh, yesterday. I was fucking shouting the house down. If anyone follows me on Instagram, I put a little video up there. Me, <laughs> my dog started going mad because I was. I, I went. I went a bit too crazy with my celebrations, and he just started getting, like mental. Oh, uh, but no, amazing. So let, let's 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 crack on with it, then, boys. Obviously, what a start to the season. First game of the season, incredible. Beating Man United for the first time ever at Old Trafford, mad, which of course do. is uh, it's a great feat. And also, as well, off the back of the four 0 win last season, to then beat them. Um, first game of the season 2-1 Again. at their own ground is in huge. that and Pascal Gross in that fashion yeah mm. exactly yeah. the referees tried to cheat us but we'll get we'll get on to all of that so quickly then let's start Ben kick us off mate Just we'll start just with your general thoughts on the game and then we'll obviously dissect it a little bit more well I mean it couldn't have been a better start and you all laughed at me I know he didn't score but you all laughed at me about me saying Welbeck top goal scorer he's a new guy He's a new man. He's a new player. He was clutch. Welbeck hit the gym. He was clutch. And he's coming in he he's coming in clutch. He bullied both of them. I know Maguire's a fridge and obviously he's playing next to <laughs> someone smaller than both of you. But regardless, <laughs> oh, the, the centre back cost 57 million or whatever from the area of the busy. And yeah, Welbeck bullied them. And of, of course, Pascal Gross, who people were scared that he was going to leave at the end of last season, signed a new deal and became the goat you know Ronaldo like you said what did Ronaldo say it was like the king returns yeah. or something like that now the king the king plays on Sunday the yeah, king plays on Sunday and yeah the king was Pascal Gross it absolutely tore him up that's his sixth goal against Man United what a record yeah, yeah. and I think he scored the most second most amount of winners against Man United I heard a match of the day wow. too oh, uh, right. Danny Murphy was the one that actually was first but yeah wow. there's, what a day there's a, there's a stat for you what is speaking that, of time against obviously a dodgy goal sorry that they scored which was a bit unfortunate could have been handball but obviously we'll get onto that but yeah yeah. Regardless, unbelievable. And um, Ryan, yeah. what were your general thoughts on the game? Mate, yeah, unbelievable result, obviously. I think, to be fair, second half, United were very unlucky. I'll give them that. I, I won't come on here and say, like, we absolutely destroyed them. First half, definitely, definitely, completely deserved to even, you know, we could have been 3 or 4 nil up in the first half. We were absolutely all over them. And, and United, uh, you know, we speak about Martin as, a, as, as we go on to him, but... He was all over the place first sort of 15, 20 minutes. I think, if anything, maybe we started a bit slowly. But honestly, United were there for the take-in in the first half. And they, they looked like a team that were going through that transition period, you know. Um, obviously, second half, they came back a bit, to be fair. But yeah, overall, we were just, we were too good. And, and it's full credit to Graham Potter. He was absolutely got it spot on, as always, seemingly these days. And um, Potter ball masterclass, both the goals that we scored. But yeah, we'll get into them properly. But Ah, fantastic fantastic yeah. way to start the season hey, what, what a day what a day it was and let, let's yeah let's start off with them with the first half and we'll dissect the first half firstly so I, I'll just start with me I personally thought that um, first 10 minutes like I thought United looked okay like looked pretty good mm. um, but then from like 15 minutes onwards I felt like we just grabbed the game by the horns yeah. I felt like we were the much the better team in the first half um, and let's talk the first goal then first goal um, great build. I thought the build-up play was incredible. Ryan, just talk us through the how 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 good was the goal in terms of the build-up play. Obviously, you know the finish was was great, mm. but well, pretty pretty great. But just talk us through the build-up play. Yeah, mate, that was literally literally possible. And I think 
I think the the first the first as I say first ten minutes we were quite shaky and and I was worried a bit. I was mm. thinking, oh god, there's some serious gaps. You could tell Basima wasn't there. You could tell Kukurea wasn't there, and it was a bit like, oh okay, maybe we could be in with a bit of a sticky one. Um, but then I just I don't know how United did it. They seemed to just shoot themselves in the foot from, from minute sort of fifteen, and all of a sudden Brighton were everything that you would expect them to be, like Graham Potter plays and. Caicedo was was absolutely rampant again. It, it seemed like he was up for it, so like he good. was at the Amex back in May. He was he was right on it, Caicedo again. And yeah, point to it, prove it again a, a possible... against Man United because they rejected him, didn't they? So he had a point <laughs> yeah, to prove yeah, 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 exactly. again against Man United. Exactly. Yeah, and it, it, he was just absolutely on it. And, and, and yeah, it was it, Pascal Gross got his fifth goal at the time against Manchester United and thoroughly deserved. As we as we said earlier, it was funny because he's been this man that's been so split on opinions for such a long long time and now I think most of the fan base say he's an Albion legend I say he's an Albion legend as well and it, it, since since he's, he's had this little like shaky part where he could have potentially gone he seems to have just turned into a completely different beast he's like uh, you know aging like a well, fine wine literally mm. no 100% and and Ben uh, what were your thoughts on well, yeah, it, it, just in general, the the first goal, how he went about, you know, getting through Man Because I felt like the Man United defence, albeit very, very poor, I thought we'd done very well with the mm, passes yeah. we made. And, like, it, it was actually credit mm. to us how, how we actually went about that first goal. But, yeah, what were it, your thoughts? Well, we, we won the ball back, didn't we? We were, we were all mm. over them like a rash. Like, we were pressing them so high up. It was so good to see. Mm. And, uh, yeah, like, Welbeck looked like he had, like, 18-year-old legs. He was running so much. It was, <laughs> it was so good to see. Yeah, and obviously we went win the ball back. Um, we got kind of lucky, I guess, because Welbeck was inches onside, were they? Mm, just about literally. onside yeah, for that yeah. goal. Just, yeah. just. And then obviously Luke Shaw got caught sleeping at the back post, but you know we made them pay because we literally flooded that box of people. Obviously similar mm, to the second yeah. goal we'll get onto, but yeah. That, that, it was, sorry, I guess it's just the confidence that Potter gets in this team. Like Again, Welbeck, free agent, everyone kind of laughed at us signing him. A lot of people did. But the confidence, mm. if, when players have confidence and your manager gives you confidence, you can play at Old Trafford mm. and play passes like that constantly and make them look like the, the smaller team. It's it's crazy. Yeah. 100%. And just, just quickly on the point that you made about winning second balls, oh, sorry, winning every ball, I thought that was huge yesterday. Like I remember in the second half especially, mm. there was that period, because do, do you remember when um, sort of uh, it went... They obviously came out like all guns blazing. They proper pushed us up until about, I feel like they sort of ran out of steam in the last 15 minutes. Like in terms yeah. of, I, I didn't feel too uncomfortable, if that makes sense. Obviously they, they were no. a threat, but I didn't feel too. I right. kept but refreshing that's because my phone. We were winning every I was ball. worried. I was like, oh, come on, come on. Because I was, I was watching it. Yeah. Because as everyone knows around Brighton these days, my Wi Fi is awful. <laughs> so the, I was obviously watching it on Now TV. So I literally couldn't, I couldn't keep up with the game I was like three minutes behind because my, my wi-fi is so bad for the now tv so I was just refreshing my phone it's the only time I allowed myself to do it and when that full time came in mate absolute mm. scenes oh mate mm. and I, I was I was exactly the same I watch it on sky uh, on my xbox so yeah I'm always like a minute a minute behind <laughs> yeah. so I always have to try and get like little little updates to make yeah. sure it's full time but just talking of um Danny Welbeck because we're, we're, we're giving him a lot like we all, and, and also, I've been his critic in the past, and we've we, we've spoken about it in the past about how you all I still don't. F- yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have been quite not critical. But I, I want to say I was critical, but I've always doubted if he's the right him. choice <laughs> for like that. Stuff. No, 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 no. no I've, ne- I've never hated him. Let's be clear. I've just, I've just doubted. So, like, my, let's, uh, so I'll just say it now because I, I want to talk about Danny Welbeck, and I think it's it's good for us to talk about it. I feel like he's a great mm. player. Okay, I'm, I'm not doubting that. As yeah. we saw yesterday, he is a good player. My my sort of reserve judgment or my sort of issue potentially is, is he good enough to improve us from last season as the starting centre half? Uh, striker, sorry. That's my sort of view mm. on Danny Welbeck. Is like, is he capable of staying fit all season, number one? Yeah. And secondly, good. leading the line uh, as the, that number one striker who will, who will bag you 10 to oh. 15 goals on a consistent basis. That's I would my take this because... thinking. I would say I would say he's more than good enough. Definitely more than good enough. I think the the biggest question over Danny Welbeck's been his fitness. But we've all seen the photos of, of Welbeck all all summer of him of him absolutely smashing out of the gym. And my God, does he look pretty good? And we and when you saw him at um, United, he looked so fit and, and, and in a way where he just was seemed to have an extra yard of pace to everyone else. And it was so weird. 
to to watch Welbeck all of a sudden go back like ten years. Uh, it was like watching Welbeck when he was a youngster yeah. for Man United, and he was he was sort of breaking the lines, and it, it was something that Brighton haven't had in so long for someone to break the lines. And as, as you said earlier, the high press was so impressive, and and, and Potter's got a fantastic way. I said to my mate uh, Cal, he's a Man United fan, and I said to him, Potter's got a fantastic way of being able to make the opposition look so poor, which is why everyone always says the opposition were poor in a Brighton way. Because Potter seems to make them yes, make mistakes by high pressing and by doing this slow and draining passing. So if you're playing a game, it's draining because you've got to concentrate on that ball going left to right to left to right. And then as soon as you get a minute to get the ball and think about it, Brighton are on to you. And and that's a that's a thing completely down to Graham Potter. Um, and, and Welbeck seems to have fit that like a glove now. If he can fit and, and run like he has been, so particularly yesterday, then we are in for a treat with him this season because... Since his surgery, he hasn't he hasn't had an injury. I don't believe he had that surgery on something that's been bothering him for two or three years. Since his surgery, he hasn't had a problem, and you know he pretty much started every game for us since. And um, you know, full credit to yeah, him. He's, he's, he's definitely got the quality. Yeah. And similar to Welbeck nice. as well. Obviously, Adam Lallana, them two linking up was like the England 2016 team. We literally had them like playing in the yeah, rival. Yeah. Lallana was so good when, when he was in this uh, when. When I saw that he was in the starting lineup, I was a bit concerned. I was like, "Oh, we haven't really got too much strength yeah. in that midfield, really." And uh, you know, the line of people, I guess, similar to Welbeck, you kind of some people, yeah, well, he has doubters, doesn't he? Anyway, and whether he's fit mm. enough and all that sort of stuff. But he was quality. He was so mm. good. Yeah, him and Welbeck were linking up brilliantly. I think, I think, I think, and I think that's the key thing, isn't it? It's like we all know their qualities. Like we both, we we know that both Adam and Lana and Danny Welbeck possess high quality. You know, some some might even say beyond Brighton's ability or skill you know those people that don't really know Brighton but they might be like oh they're too good for Brighton blah 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 blah. but I feel like when they're both fit and that's and that's the key thing it's like when they're fit that's the when they are because I feel like they're they're more injured than they they are fit so that's my only concern with them both but yeah again like you said for Welbeck was fantastic got to give credit where credit's due he was brilliant just never stopped running and he uh, you know presented some really good opportunities for us and uh, and ran the lines as as Ryan said and then also Lalana was just classy as as when he uh, we know how good he can be it's again though and i'm surprised he lost 80 minutes to be honest with you uh because i saw a lot yeah. of he was getting a lot of stick on well, he's uh, had a whole summer off to be fair so surely <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but, but no, there we go. Yeah, though, no. Maz, before i forget i know this should be a really positive episode because we just beat man united and we're no, first game of the season and all. yeah but one concern was and we spoke about the pub when it was happening we were like looking at the bench and we're thinking the only person with prem experience there is neil mope like there was no one to bring on that had a bit of experience and i feel like I- that's what we're lacking now we don't have that prem experience, which is obviously what's to give opportunity to these new people. But obviously, mm. I feel like Potter was hesitant to use the subs. Like, let, let's not forget, there's five subs he could have used, and he only—I mm. well, think he brought on Colwell and then Under for like the two minutes, wasn't it? So, uh, I, so I, I, would course, dis- but... I would disagree. So, well, I, do you remember, I, I, I don't know if you guys remember, but I put it in the chat before. I went uh, in terms of the bench. If you looked at Man United's and ours, I I felt like we had more game changers apart from Ronaldo, obviously for United. Yeah, game changers, yeah. I, I, I felt like in terms Great. of bringing people off the bench, I thought I was, I was, you know, we had Sam, Samiento, we had uh, Matoma, Undav. Um, it's more just like experience Lamptey. rather than like game changers. I just think. No, about, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, very, yeah, I agree. Really definitely. Really definitely really I get what both you're saying. No, I definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely agree. No, I, I agree. We didn't have the experience on the bench. Like, if you need, I, but I suppose though, you could argue we were two one. Uh, I'm sorry, the score was two one, and. It, we actually, in the end, saw the game through. You could, mm. you could argue if you brought those players on mm. and they, you know, we fucked it and we went 2-2 or even lost 3-2, you, then I'd be like, okay, fair enough. We didn't have the experience of the bench and that's how we lost that game. But it seemed like it was a nice mixture because when Wepu came off the bench, he helped, yeah. you know, his yeah. legs say, um, being fresh helped. Sorry, sorry. I, I completely interrupted you there. It's, I'm like a few seconds behind you. <laughs> that's that's right. Right. I don't hear everything. Um, yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I would say that... Um, yeah, in terms of subs, I agree. With, I, I agree with both your points. I think that, yeah, in terms of individual quality, we've got it. In terms of experience, yeah, we probably haven't. But I think that's probably the, the thing that we're trying to do anyway. I'd say that probably the, the, the problem yesterday, and I don't want to talk about problems, but I suppose we've got to as well because we are a podcast, we've got analysts as well. Uh, so the, the problems yesterday probably came from the fact that, yes, you could notice at times Kuka and Basuma were missing, 100%. I think that uh, particularly Basuma's presence wasn't there. I think the the uh, winner in midfield was was probably the one thing that you would expect us and probably want us to have before the end of the season. And I, I understand people's points on Twitter where they say Caicedo isn't Basuma's replacement in terms of like for like 
he's perceived as a replacement in terms of system and, and possibly not to replace like for likes. He likes to replace system players. But equally, obviously, you know, you see yesterday Fulham against, or was it the day before, against Liverpool? The, was it Pena was absolutely brilliant in midfield, holding midfield. He was uh, sort of breaking the play up. Uh, putting challenges in, spraying passes, and that's what Basuma did for us, and and that's the sort of player that I think Brighton do need in our system is a is an anchor because at times you know as much as it was a fantastic result, historic day, everything was great. At the end of the day, you know I had some massive massive chances to, to at least score an equaliser, and mm. I think you know another they took them away. And I think, you know, against a team that was probably better than United, which is crazy to say these days, I think they probably would have took them away. And I think, yeah, that's probably the one 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 my thing I'd say is is we do need replacements for Kuka and Basuma. I, I I probably would stand by that. Although he might do a fantastic job at, at left back. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's talk about March and talk about the second goal because he was instrumental in, in, in that second goal yeah. as well. Mm. So obviously Solly March uh Pascal Gross started the move. Uh, actually, sorry, Caicedo started the move, yeah. then passed it to yeah, Gross, Caicedo. who then spread spread it out to Lalana, who then Lalana then spread it out to March, and he had the shot which De Gea parried into uh, Gross's path, and of course he scored. Yeah. So it was one of those goals. I thought, um, and I'll kick us off on this one. I thought it was again Caicedo so done good. really well to win the ball, um, and then that transition to. Just it was, pitch, it was literally it was... our defensive corner flag to their yeah. defensive corner flag, literally corner to corner in such yeah. quick succession. It was it was such a good move, and I, and I thought that was brilliant. Like that literally. that transition, that smooth transition yeah. between players. Just you know, Caicedo onto Gross, Gross onto Lalana, Lalana. Like everyone was involved, mm. and I thought that was brilliant. It was mm. really nice to see, and I thought March done really well. I think I can't remember who is it Luke Shaw is up against, and he sort of just cut yeah, him up Luke a little Shaw. bit. Yeah, you know, yeah, gave him a little sort of jiggy little. You know, one two step, and then um, good little shot, and De Gea parried it onto Gross. Yeah, and I thought weakest it was a great shot goal. you'll so, see, but you never expect a powerful shot from Solly Mark. Just to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But just, just, <laughs> just for him to get it on. You know, to, to, to I thought I was happy that he just made the keeper work. You know, because yeah. like, there's a lot of times where yeah. in that situation he might mm. skew it wide, or he'll do a bad cross, or mm. you know that end product's not there. And at least he made De Gea work, which then mm. resulted in Gross scoring. So yeah, I was really impressed. What were your thoughts, Ryan, on um, on March's involvement in that goal? Uh, yeah, and in general, Mark's involvement, full stop. I thought he was great from start to finish. And, I, and I've always been like, you know, I'm not, I'm not a March hater by any means. I, I, I've never been like a March fanboy, so I'm, I'm sort of in that in between of like, I'm not, not too sure. Of him. But yesterday, I, I think I stand by the fact in his 20, 20 season, twenty one, he was so so good at, at left back for the whole season. Um, arguably, was player of the season to be injured. And he's proven it again. And, and, and although Kukurea will be a big miss, and I, and I stand by that, but I think at the same time, March is more than capable of playing left wing back for us this year. As long as he stays fit and everything, he was he was just brilliant. And, and it is really, it's really reassuring to know that, and, and again, this is full credit to Graham Potter, but as soon as a player does go out, the system doesn't collapse and, and, and Brighton don't collapse. We, we have that, you know, safety buffer, it seems. And, it, and it, even if the player on paper would seem weaker than the other, it doesn't seem to matter for us. They still seem to be able to step mm. up and Potter seems they to still be able to get the best out they? of them. Yeah, and yeah. It, there's, there's that confidence, there's the, almost the arrogance and swagger as well. They we sort of strut around, walk the ball around and, and, and rightfully so. It's so impressive to watch and it, sometimes, you you know, especially during the United game, I was just sat there like, wow, this is Brighton. You know, this is the club that we used we to watch in team. League One and etc. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, wow, we really are playing some great football and to be honest, it looks like everyone's just loving it and you Saw Graham Potter at the end of it as well, going up to all the fans, you know, yeah. doing all this. Yeah, Potter at first has always done that. Potter now seems to just absolutely love it. Mm. But you're speaking about was, swagger. Obviously, like even Trossard, like um, doing that back heel in a pretty dangerous area, and obviously, yeah. kind of luckily, can't say like, yeah. beat. I think beat McTominay to it or beat Ericsson to it. But yeah, just like having the ball yeah. to do that back heel and set off that <laughs> like, tackle. Yeah. Everyone's everyone was sleeping. We we're just hoping that Dallow was going to press him. But yeah, no, I agree. He got you. out of it with the confidence. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was brilliant. And we'll definitely go on to Potter because I feel like uh, we need to talk about how how impressive it is to lose two key players and for him to still keep yeah. us stylistically brilliant. Man United away. Players. What? <laughs> yeah, Man United. I, 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 just before I forget, but we, we'll do like a segment with Potter, but just before I forget, it was funny, I because um, I'm in the office at the moment and I was speaking to a Spurs fan and he actually said, he goes, it reminds me of when Potch was at Spurs 
and they got to the Champions League final. And it was like, he said that Spurs didn't necessarily have the best squad or the best team, but Poch got them playing to a level where they were playing really yeah. good football and they were getting results. And he said that it, he actually felt like there's a lot of similarities between what Potter's doing at Brighton now. Champions League like, final painted them, boys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but like, you know, it's just true. Like, if, you, if, you look at, if you look at our squad, if you look at our squad, obviously losing Pukare and, uh, um, and Basuma, if you look at our squad, we, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't put it in like the top 10 squads in the Premier League, would you? You'd maybe put it sort of mid-table, no. in, in my personal opinion. Yeah. But, but he's, yeah. he's, he's getting getting them playing you know at like a uh, sort of six top six not you know top yeah. four but top six kind of level like beating well man united should, they expect to be beating um uh, getting sixth mm. place so we've just beaten man united so you know that's the it's the sort of levels what Our we're team playing is literally I mean, particularly pascal in, gross in, on, yeah and on, on, on Matt's point about the, the perhaps weaker players i mean pascal gross is by no means a weak player right but uh, you know Give it about two or three years ago, particularly that 18 19 season, if I remember him rightly. He seemed to just go down. I think this was a, a, a shooting at the time. And he yeah. seemed to be playing almost holding midfield. And it, he just got caught out, you know, all the time. And and it was like, you know, is, is Gross going to come back to the level of the first season or was he a one hit wonder? And the last three years under Potter, he seems to have just revived his career and made him, you know, literally, Brighton fans call him an Albion legend now, and I'd agree. And that's, that in itself is like, I don't think people realise how impressive that is to make someone go from a player that looked like he was on the outskirts of a club to becoming a legend. Like, that's just completely polar opposites. And it's full credit, again, I, you can't speak highly enough of Potter. You can just only do it more and more. 100%. And um, going on to then the, the, the final goal of the game, um, in the second half, obviously, Man United did push us. I, I felt like they definitely created some chances. Uh, they looked uh, at times the better side, but we obviously stood strong. But the, the, the goal from the corner, um, there was obviously there was shouts of what? Uh, handball. Oh. There was shouts of offside. United did nothing there in was... that goal. <laughs> if we literally yeah. did the whole thing to ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, so let's just talk then um, about the goal because defensively we looked a bit shaky, didn't we? And also last season, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, we did struggle sometimes to set pieces, didn't we? Um, so do you think do you see that oh, yeah, being an Sanchez issue? Was a bit flappy, isn't he? Yeah, well, flappy yeah. Bit. Do you see do you see that uh, Ben? We'll start with you. Do you see that being an issue into, coming into the season? As in, do you think we'll be susceptible from set pieces and you know defending set pieces, or do you think it was just a one off? And Sanchez usually is pretty reliable when it comes to those kind of situations. Mm. Well, obviously we we know we had like three goalkeeping mistakes in pre season. Two of them were from Sanchez. And obviously, you already have one again this season. And he seems to like, we were talking about the club again, but right, he seems to blame other players around him. But in that moment, yeah, he had no one yeah. to blame but himself. He literally, yeah. Um, yeah, like, it was like, I think Dallow was in front of him. No one was pushing him from behind. Um, there wasn't really anything he could complain about, to be honest. He just flapped it and, yeah, yeah. messed up again. And obviously, it's kind of like a, a, shit, well, a shit situation when you've got Sanchez trying to die for it and McAllister's trying to clear it. It's just a natural instinct to both try and clear it at the same time. It would be really, really, really harsh if you would say they should have communicated a bit better. But, you know, in that moment, the ball's about to go in. You're just going to do anything you can to try and get rid of it. But hundred um, percent. Yeah, I think yeah. Sanchez. I, but yeah, go back to question. Sorry, I think yeah, I I would be surprised if we do see a few more mistakes like that from Sanchez. Um, it doesn't seem like he's improving from those from those errors that he seems to be making. And, and Brian, do you agree? Like that. Do, you, do you agree with that? Do you agree with that, Brian? <laughs> what are you on about? Uh, no, I I had my eyes closed when that happened, so I don't know. But um, in terms of <laughs> Sanchez overall in the game. I thought, um, I thought to be fair, he, he had some fantastic saves. And I actually put the tweet out. Yeah. Um, as I put the tweet out, he, he then conceded that awful flap. And it was really annoying because I just put out a say now he's made some fantastic saves and savers. I think the, the corner that was it led to was, was a fantastic save. And, and then before that as well, the, the one-on-one with, was it Rashford, I think, went through? Um, yep. so it, yeah. Yeah. Like, Cut across from Ronaldo, Rashford. Yeah, that was it. And he sort of like Schmeichel-esque spread his body and and got a hand on it. It was a it was a great save. So you know, for me to come on a mistake, Sanchez would be you know suicide for me, and not only just because of that, but you know. But I think um, overall, I thought he was he had a, he had a great game. But yeah, that that, um, that mistake was was quite poor. That but then I suppose you could also that put that down to first game of this. Yeah, first game of the season, you know, like I can I can let that slide a lot more than probably if it was mid season this year. Um, but like you know, overall fantastic. And I, him and Ange were just 
colossal at the back for us, like really were. Oh, he's fantastic. Uh, j- just just quick one on that, Ryan. Going forward then, do, do you see set pieces and that defensive um, potential frailties, do you see that being an issue this season or do you think it's, that was just an isolated incident? I think, to be honest, I wouldn't put that down to it because overall we were quite solid from set pieces. I wasn't worried, really, when set pieces were going in. The, the biggest thing that we got caught for was the counter-attack. And I think that the big part of that, as I said earlier, it was the, the lack of Kukwe and Basuma. That may be more quality. Uh, you know, we can talk about how, you know, it's great having players that are up for it and, and you know, morale's fantastic. <clears throat> but overall, I think if you've got a if you've got a less quality in the side, naturally, when it comes to a... A counter attack led by Christian Eriksen, Ronaldo, and um, Marcus Rashford. These are all quality players, you know. So they're going rapid to be able players. to exploit that. Um, yeah. Rapid and, and and very very intelligent players as well, particularly Eriksen yeah. and Ronaldo. So mm-hmm. you know when you when you've got that coming against and you haven't got maybe that quality at the at the back or in holding midfield, then that we could be caught. But I, I do believe that we will replace at least a left back this summer. But I, we'll see. I hope so. Yeah. Hopefully. So speaking of that um, that chance, obviously Ronaldo went through on goal. And it reminds me of the, again, what happened in the first half when Welbeck went through on goal, one on one with De Gea, and the Lana put his flag up when he oh, should have put mate. his flag up. Yeah, that was time. I was, de- I was, I was yeah. livid. We mm. were all so livid. Because yeah. then obviously, I think he was on side. Um, but obviously, you're, you're, the linesmen get told to not put their flag up, but yeah. for some reason he did. That's what and I, then when Ronaldo's through on goal, he didn't put his flag up. That's what I didn't understand. Like, but why is, there, why is there one rule? Like, why yeah, do they let exactly. well, some it's play? Because it's Man United at Old Trafford. It's, <laughs> it's Man United at Old Trafford. Oh my God, we've said it bang on at the same time. <laughs> right, just just quickly before we sort of got a digress. Um, just quickly before I forget, because uh, we talk about set pieces. Do you remember when um, uh, we were attacking, we had, a, we had a free kick in the second half, and it was Malassia against Dunk, who's about five foot five. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then, and then and then Martinez. I think it was Webster, and it was just brilliant because it was like the two shortest guys on the pitch marking the two tallest guys yeah. on the pitch. So I saw Rashford's face like Maz talking think, about um, height. Because <laughs> <laughs> sure. Malassia started like holding mm. um, the person Fred that Rashford Dyer. was marking, and then Rashford was like hitting Malassia's arm away. He was like, I think he was looking around, and be like, "Fucking hell, why are we marking these lot like these two, the giants <laughs> on the pitch?" And, got, and even Col- Colwell, when Colwell came on as well, like he's yeah. what, he's he's not short exactly. Yeah, so Colwell was, was massive, isn't he? Yeah, I was really so, surprised by that. He looked really big. I, I, sorry, I, I was like, "Whoa!" Okay. Yeah, but don't worry, lads. You're still short kings, and uh, don't listen to the haters. <laughs> all right, mate. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he came on like Malassia, didn't he? Lamptey turned him inside out. Oh my god! You to, yeah, you got to hack him down. <laughs> I was gonna talk, I was gonna talk about that. Let, let's talk about Lamptey's because obviously Lamptey, we we were disappointed pointed last season in terms of his injuries he was out a lot of the season it was it's quite sad to see little, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was quite sad to see just because of how well he did the previous season um how key do you think he'll be to this season and do you see him starting uh you, like taking that, that 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 right wing back spot as his own this season back again or or do you see him now because of his injuries do you think Potter's a bit wary and we'll start with Ryan on this one I thought Lamsey was sharp when he came on. Like he, he, I even put a tweet on. I think at the in the moment, I said he's he looked like the the Lamsey of old. Of old. Sorry, I have got COVID. <coughs> but um, yeah, he, he he looked like the Lamsey of old, and and he was sort of you know taking on. Yeah, it was Malassia, wasn't it? He he, he slept on his mm. bum, and that turn of pace, and you know that that more so confident take on players which we haven't seen from Lamptey as much since his injuries was really reassuring I thought because you know you are at Old Trafford you know the the, the prestige of playing against United is there regardless of what people think and, and then to be a young player and take taking on players like that <coughs> it's impressive and uh, yeah I think Lamptey's definitely got uh, hopefully a, a redemption season in because I just think he's he seems like a nice boy doesn't he <laughs> and he's a nice guy, isn't he? and he can play as well. So that's always good. Um, and and, 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 and Ben, just just quickly, Ben, thoughts on Lamptey? I think, yeah, I think it'll be tough for him to get in the side. Obviously, if we don't replace Cucurella, we're probably more likely to see Sonny March move from right wing back to left wing back, which will then obviously free up that space. Unless then Veltman goes right wing back, like we have seen him. But I think, yeah, I feel I feel like he's got to try and beat Sonny March in training, I guess, because Solly's holding that right wing back position down pretty well. Um, obviously he did get switched I'm pretty sure he got switched flanks a couple of times so mm. yeah I don't think it would be as easy as it probably would have been last season uh, to get back in the team 
Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, I just mm. think it'll be quite tough. Sorry, my brain's absolutely frazzled at the moment. That's, that's all right. Um, that's all right. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> all right. Um, so then, uh, let's talk about, there's some, there's three key decisions I, I want to talk about in this game because I felt like the officials <laughs> tried their best to, to, you know, lose us that game. Yeah. So let's, let's talk through each three ones and we'll start from like in chronological order. So the first one. Uh, and we'll go along the line. So Ben, you start us off, and then Ryan, you, you, last night. So the first one is, of course, Tom uh, McTominay on Caicedo. So he got booked. Do you think it was a red card? Do you think it was a yellow card or, or red? Um, I said, well, obviously not being biased, maybe give him the benefit of the doubt because Caicedo kind of jumped in as well. Oh, it looks horrendous in slow mo, but a lot of things do look bad in slow mo. Mm -hmm. um, the players didn't really make, and obviously the players did kind of go up to the referee to say something, but they didn't make a massive deal like you sometimes see with those kind of tackles. So mm. it was obviously borderline on the red. Um, I would have been, I would have been upset, obviously, if our Brighton player got sent off for that, but obviously it, it looked horrendous. Um, mm. and I don't, obviously, I, we know what Tom is like. seems like take. a bit of a, seems like a bit of a shit house, but I give him the benefit of that. I don't think he kind of meant it. I don't think he meant okay. it. Okay. Ryan, Ryan doesn't agree. So Ryan, what, what, well, what are your thoughts? No. On? no I as a red, <laughs> I, I'm not even being biased. I spoke to, as I said, right. I, I mentioned Cow earlier. Now he is the most deluded Man United fan you'll ever meet, and I, I don't care saying it. He is. He, I'll tell him to his face. He is the most deluded Man United fan you'll ever meet. So for him to even say to me that it was a red and that he hates McTominay, he thinks an idiot. To me, that says it's a red card. I, I don't. It's I probably because he hates he McTominay. In the air, his studs were up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but his studs were up. His, his legs were straight. It was a reckless challenge, and I think that yeah, if, you're, if you're putting yourself in that situation, you're, you're risking the chance of breaking the kid's leg. It's a red card. I, I don't, I don't think that that would have changed even five, six, ten years ago. I think that that's a red card any day, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so we've got a split. I suppose, uh, yeah, my view on it was. So I agree with Ben what Ben said in terms of um, Caicedo also did like jump in because obviously how it all came about was it was a poor touch from McTominay so the ball he's, he's mm. had a poor first touch and the ball's gone away from him so he's he's gone he's lunched in to to try and win it back and then uh Caicedo's come in a little bit more aggressively as well but then I also agree with Ryan like I basically I agree with both two like but both of you in, in certain <laughs> aspects and I, and I agree with Ryan like he does go over the ball and he does yeah. catch Caicedo on the ship so you can sort of see both camps, mm. and I, I would edge fence. more towards. Could have snapped yeah, his leg. Edge, like, that's how I look I, at I would, it. It's, it's a leg breaker. Yeah, yeah I, I edge more towards it being a red, but then I also understand why. Well, well, I sort of don't get when VAR reviewed it; they didn't give the red. So you know, it was looked at twice. So no. you know, yeah, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm edging towards the red more than I am the yellow. Yeah. But that's yeah. just that's just where where I stand on it. Yeah. All right, and then the second decision uh, it was the penalty. Um, well, the one no, that wasn't oh given but God, by Martinez. So Martinez on Welbeck. Um, yeah. it, was, it was a shove in the back. This now, for, one, I'll start. I'll start. Agree on. I, yeah, I'll yeah. start. I'll start off because what a shambles that was. Like how that was not given as a penalty. <laughs> It was a dis it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace, as Didier Drogba says. It's it is disgrace. disgrace. It's a disgrace. Um, yeah, like he's just literally. He, he's not even looked at the ball. He's just run into the back of him. He's branched him in the shoved back, him over. and he's just shoved him over. And I don't know how. And it was looked and at he's by put VAR. His leg across him as well, which is like literally yeah. a foul. And, and the fact that VAR looked at that and thought, nah, it's not a penalty. Like, that's do what I'm losing me the most. Do you think it's because he was on a yellow card? Do you think if it was a centre back or other player that wasn't on a yellow, that would have changed the game? Because he would have been sent off. Even if it was a yellow, it would be a second yellow. Do you think that it would have been given if it was a player that wasn't well, already in a yellow? I don't, I don't care if he's on no yellows or if he's no, on you know, some, five yellows. Some, some, referees be, kind of like to, some referees kind of like to give players the benefit of that or keep 11 v 11, so it's but fair. No, but th that, that's okay. I, I know it's bullshit. Yeah, right. No, no, yeah. I get, I get yeah. your point you're making. I, I get the point you're making, but it's bullshit. Like, yeah. uh, it doesn't matter if he's on a yellow or whatever. <laughs> if, it's a, if it's a foul, if it's a foul, it's a foul. Like, you can't just yeah. be like, oh, oh I want to keep the game eleven versus eleven. Like, as a referee, that's a really terrible. If, if referees at Old Trafford is what I'm saying. Like, that would have changed. That would have been the game done because he was. He oh, hundred percent. Yeah, it would have been three yeah. nil. It would have been three yeah. nil. It would have been his second yellow. He would have been sent off, yeah. and it's game over. But Brighton player that would have been given straight away. Anyway, yeah, so that, that's an easy one I think we can all agree on. Yeah, uh, and then the final one was... Yeah, what was the final one? Uh, I'm just trying to think now. I had the third one. Um, what's the big talk? Oh, Maguire. Maguire. 
Maguire because there was there's a bit of talk oh, about Trussard, Maguire and Trossard yeah because yeah, I saw them too they were getting yes, into it yes. they were getting WWE into it match. yeah <laughs> and, and, and I was I was actually worried a little bit for Trossard because he was he was biting back and he was you start you start to get involved basically yeah and and uh, Potter I think identified that and took him off so I thought yeah. I thought Potter done really well there because I saw Trossard Maguire dragging down bit. again didn't he after yeah the, after and they've done like a WWE scrap. move on him yeah. yeah. Um, so that was yeah. So yeah. What, what were your thoughts on them? Um, like, do you think Maguire was quite lucky to to avoid his second yellow, or do you feel like it was just a bit of you know from both sides, cross side? And Ryan, you kick us off, man. Hey, the whole game, like not even these big decisions, but the whole game. Like, I don't want to just sound like that person that blames us, but the thing is, we won the game, and it still makes me mad as to how some of the decisions in that game were crazy. And even I say, when you got Man United fans and Palace fans agreeing with you, I think that's when you know that it's a bit messy. Because I just think, like, especially Palace fans on Twitter, like they would just disagree with everything. So, I don't, yeah, I think that Maguire, Maguire was a lucky boy. Trossard was a lucky boy. He was biting back, yes, like 100%. But Maguire let you throw him on the floor. So, I don't know. And he held him on the floor as well. So, you know, how, how that's... I don't know. I, I didn't know that was another football, but maybe it is. But, you know, it applies to Man United and not the rest. And I think, you know, if, if all of these sort of decisions happen the other way around, they would have all been given in the in really the rightful way. So, yeah, mm. it's just playing Man United. And I'm so glad we got one up because, honestly, like, it's just whenever we seem to go there, there seems to be a problem. Sorry, every time I try to talk, I cough. <coughs> but, yeah, it was just messy. Absolutely messy. Mm. Yeah, no, 100%. Right, so just to summarise then, boys, um, incredible <coughs> start to the season, three points at Old Trafford, first time we've ever done it. Um, and it just, I, I think, uh, it just sets us off in a really good, like, mood. So going into Newcastle next week, which, of course, we'll get on to, yeah. I think it just sets the tone now, hopefully, for the for the rest of the season, fingers crossed. Like, it, that positivity is there straight from the off, because I think it easily could have gone the other way. If we'd lost that game, let's say, 3-0 or something, or, you know, like, or 2-0, 3-0, when we, we just didn't look great, I think that could have just set the tone and we will just go into this season yeah. being like oh, oh, we've lost Basuma we've lost Kukure oh, we're fucked Shit, like, this is bad. terrible relegation but, battle yeah. yeah but it wasn't and we're all looking positive and we're all happy so yeah I'm I'm really excited so uh, just talking about Kukure then just quickly we, obviously he left this week uh, to join Chelsea uh, in a £62 million move which in the I think, bank Tony Blue is think, having a yeah <laughs> let's just let's just I just want to give a clap to Tony Bloom because yeah. I feel like uh, and Paul Barber and yeah whoever it is doing all the yeah well done well done to the club because I feel like we've made what was it nearly so 30 million, 35 million for Basuma 62 like 9500 right about 150 million from free transfers now that's fucking stadium amazing. paid like, stadium was paid off yeah. so much. stadium didn't even cost that much it was just, it was yeah. just and, mental uh, yeah. <laughs> And I think I think that's class. Like you know, the fact that he's he didn't let Chelsea and Man City bully us. Like they easily could have bullied us into submission and be like, "Oh, take forty million, take thirty five, whatever for Kukurea." But he's like, "No, hang about. I'm fucking Tony Bloom, mate." Yeah. Mm. And then we got sixty two million. So, so I, think, yeah. I think the highest bid that he rejected from City, which is obviously where Cucurella wanted to go and the only club he wanted to go to, in quotation marks, <laughs> was forty million. And they rejected that, and they're sitting like, "No, we're not doing that." So the fact then Chelsea spent twenty two million more. Then City's highest bid mm. is nuts, and yeah, again, yeah. props, props to whoever negotiates that. Tony and but yeah, was and, and I think yeah. We're, yeah, we're all we're all um, we're all in agreement that we do need to replace those two players. Um, but then I, 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 I saw as well, I think Cucurella more, yeah, is more than necessary. Hundred percent left wing back. I feel like we definitely need. Yeah, See, I, I think we're more midfield. I just I just felt like there were so many gaps, um, particularly in transition yesterday. I think that was the only thing. And this is the really annoying thing about doing these podcasts and stuff and doing football like this. I said, because, because I was saying it to Dad, like, you, you, you see the game in a, in a more sort of obvious way than just as a fan. So I'm watching it and I'm like, yeah, but I can see a gap there. Or I can see that. I'm just like, why do I see this? Because before I would just be able to watch the game in peace and not have to worry about that. Mm. But now, yeah, I can see the gap in midfield. And I think it's particularly in transition, it was kind of... Uh, more obvious but yeah I agree with the left back situation because if March does get injured again because he does get the decent not loads of injuries but here and there um, it would be quite bad for us to, to go into that I think we will though because I think they did say we will it's, um, it's, but yeah, yeah no, full credit I, I'll just say full credit to Blue that yeah, no, and also as well, and it's funny you should say that because I tweeted out saying, "Oh, we we need to now we've we've made 150 million, we need to reinvest." And I got a bit of backlash from like a lot of fans saying that, "Oh, like you know, we, uh, one person yeah. was like, oh, we lost 70 million during COVID." First of all, 
every club did so we're not yeah. the only ones um, and second of all as well yeah. like so, um, I said someone was like oh like we can't just keep signing players and like we have signed players etc etc and they named they ruled off a few players but I was like okay a lot of them have, lo- have gone out on loan like Adingra uh, Kozlowski you know a few players have gone out on loan and the players that we have signed that when Kiso Isn't for example is he staying Kozlowski uh, yeah, yeah. who's uh, you're thinking oh, sorry, not uh, I think he yeah. might be staying, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you're sorry, yeah, yeah. Because that yeah. was actually a reassuring point, actually. Um, because the club put a thing on about him saying, you know, that he's got this 27 number. And I was thinking, maybe he could get in a chance because he's meant to be like, if you play football manager, you'll know. <laughs> but he, he looks like a wonder kid. Yeah. And to be fair, it, you know, it's another, it's not a typical Brian, you know, he'll probably come in a bit like, uh, sorry, like I say, though, come back January time. And he'll be an absolute world beater, and be saying he's worth seventy million. Just, just knowing how he how he seems to roll. But Fit. yeah, I don't know. He's he uh, he seems like a really exciting one, and mm. potentially potentially an internal replacement for that holding midfield spot. Can I? You know, should we not replace them? And maybe quickly that's the a quick it. shout out to Alexis Picasso who filled in that deep deep role, didn't he? Which is oh know, yeah, which is obviously I don't think he had an unbelievable game, but he didn't have a really really bad game. Good skill the score sheet as well. <laughs> but it's yeah. just a it's just a difficult one, isn't it? You know, he's in a very attacking player, and he's now putting in this proper deep role. So yeah, fair play to Alexis. I just want to give him a little no. shout out because I know he's definitely hundred percent. Do you see his uh, Instagram post as well? No, he, what did um, he say? He said uh, he was like good to get a goal. He was, like good to get a goal at Old Trafford or something. <laughs> did he? Like, that's <laughs> that's what he said. That's, it. I wonder why. No, that's that. That, that's good chat. Yeah. That is good chat. I've got a lot of time for that. Um, right then, final one then, boys. So uh, next game, Newcastle at home. Big game that, because um, I feel like, obviously Newcastle go into it at the back of a win as well, pretty, well, not in Forest, still First impressive game. win, 2-0. Um, and Sharp obviously we got, Belter. yeah, Fabian Sharbelter, yeah, and obviously we go into it full of, full of confidence as well, Forrest so two teams, down, going down. Forrest, <laughs> two, two teams going into it with full of confidence, um, so it should be a really good game, and obviously we all know Newcastle now are, you know, a, a very decent side, um, and they have invested a lot, and I'm sure they're going to invest even more so by the end of the, the transfer window. So, kick us off, Ben. Uh, what are your thoughts generally? And then we'll sort of try and break it down a little bit more. Mm. It's a difficult one to like predict when it's only like one game in. Obviously, they played a newly promoted team. Mm. And to be honest, I thought it was going to be a bit of a tighter game than the 2 0. I did. I literally only seen the goal, so I haven't really had too much time to watch the highlights or even mm. like the, the kind of long money that Forrest has spent. Exactly. Yeah, the money they spent, I thought they would do quite well. But obviously, Newcastle improving even more. One thing I've noticed about Newcastle is defensively they are absolutely sound. And obviously they just brought Nick Pope in as well. He's the new goalkeeper, new goalkeeper mm-hmm. for them, sorry. Um, so it'll be, if we do score a goal against them, then it'll be quite a miracle because, yeah, Eddie Howe's got them very, very defensively well. Um, attacking, I mean, Callum Wilson. Nah, you know, it's can't like, Ben. What? No, we will score against Newcastle. No, we will, we will, as I'm saying. We're, but we're I just think they're, they're better in defence than Man United, that's for sure. Um, yeah, Callum Wilson's always causes trouble for us. Yeah, it? oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to be in the West Upper yeah. Rhine near you um, for the game. So I'll give you a shout out before hey, the game. Yeah. I'll see you there. Yeah, nice. First time I'll be in West Upper since what, what like, championship. I don't even know. I don't even know yet. Uh, yeah. What block? I'm not too sure. Oh, you don't know. Yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. we'll just take it. For people watching, uh, there is a... There is a, a a delay, by the way. So that's why we. Keep yeah, slight, questions. slight delay. Um, yeah, and then, and then really Ryan, Ryan, what, what's your it's thoughts really on the on the game? Yeah, I think. Um, I well, I think we've got every reason to be confident for every game nowadays. So I think you know, knowing what we're like, could we bring in a couple of players this week? Possibly, you never know. Um, you know, we've certainly got the money to do so now. We haven't got some horrible whirlwind of transfer sagas going on about players leaving either. So I think that. You know, the club should be in a bit more of a better place this week than it certainly was last. Um, but yeah, no, off the back of a win against Old Trafford, I think that, yeah, obviously there's a couple of things, but I think overall we're a good team now. And and, and midfield, and we've got so much energy in midfield. I think in on Wepu was a little bit shaky, actually, against United yeah, for me personally. He looks a bit rusty. For his usual very good standards, he was a bit uh, shaky. Yeah, but yeah, you know, first game of the season, I'll, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, but yeah, I think we've got a good team. I, I, you know, we mentioned earlier about the, the bench we've got. Potentially, Undav could get a game. Uh, we'd be good to see him get a home debut. Um, we've got Sarmiento. We've got Caicedo potentially working with Mitten Wepu as well. So yeah, we've got a great side. We've got a yeah. great side. And I'm just excited. I want to see all these young players play. You know? I want, I want yeah, to see so. them 
you know, start to show their South American flair on the pitch as well. Like, I, we've seen all the chat. I want to see him now. And also, yeah. actually, just before I finish, um, in CISO, apparently, my friend tonight is it? It's Palace um, in the under 23s. So, is it? if that's, I think oh, it's, that's... it's tonight or somewhere. Um, but yeah, so we get to keep a little scout watch on him. So, he, so that's why he wasn't there. involved on Sunday, I'm assuming, mm. yesterday. Yeah, uh, probably to ease okay. him in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. Um, just, just from me um, on the game. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm confident. Uh, just, I just want to pull out some so I feel like we, we don't really do our sort of uh, analysis on the opposition as much as we could so just quickly I'll reel off just a couple of like people yeah. I think I'll meet on Patrick be, Pendy uh, that's what I'm, that's all I'm saying yeah. <laughs> no I, I just feel like going, like looking at their team so this is the team that started against Nottingham Forest so Almiron Wilson St. Maximan Joel Linton Gimaraj and Willock now for a front six that's pretty decent to be honest mm. like Joel Linton I thought was fantastic he he um, he looked really good like from last season he's carrying his form uh, on so you know he was getting mean when he was a bit of a banter player at first yeah. when he first came in but in the last sort of six months he's yeah. just it seems like he's settled and he's really come into his own and obviously Gamares we all know like he was linked with some big clubs mm. he's a good baller and obviously Callum Wilson loves like he's just a poacher he's he's great up top um, and then like you said Ben defensively they've got Dan Byrne Shaw Trippier and Target and Pope obviously in the goal as well so like if you look Same around team. like it's a solid, solid team, yeah. So um, I think it's going to be a difficult game. Um, I feel like we'll definitely score and they can potentially score as well, for sure, with the, with the players on, on show. So I'm going to go with... Uh, so I'll start predictions, sorry. I, I just sort of went into that randomly. Um, I'll go with score predictions and I say a one-all draw uh, for me. Okay. Uh, Ryan? Very bright. It's a very bright and new castle <laughs> score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't... I don't... Uh, I yeah, we did lose to them, didn't we? We lost to them. I think yeah, we've only got one loss against Newcastle since promotion. We lost two one uh, at their, their, at their place uh, so, in yeah. March, but that was during our that was like during our shit cracking record. Period. This is really annoying. Mm. Yeah, and Eddie Howe's got a great record against us as well, which is kind of, you know probably one of those. But then again, we've got Graham Potter these days, so I'm going to go with. I don't want to just copy you and go one all, but I feel like that's probably going to be no, the I outcome. Think... So I'm going to say one nil and just hope that they don't score. Okay, right. nice, nice. And Ben? Um, yeah, I'll probably agree with you, man. I'll say, yeah, I'll say one all. Um, quick, well, I know I joked about Almiron, but he actually, like, apparently, according to my Newcastle mate, he actually scored like seven goals during pre-season. Um, so I stuck him in my FDL okay. team. Hopefully he'll become a well-being really? for me. But hopefully not against Matt yeah. Goff. Yeah, after Brian obviously, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah one, yeah. one all. Good I think it one all. Why not? Okay, nice. Well, what, what I reckon we should do, and we can talk about it after Ben quickly, cool. but I reckon we should just start doing our predictions like on, on the Instagram and then get people to interact. I think it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Boys, absolute cracking pod. Of course, all positivity, all good vibes. We beat Man United at Old Trafford for the first time season ever. Season three. Um, and hopefully, season three, we're back with a bang. We've got new graphics. Man. We've got new energy. We've got new vibes. We've got beef with Fabrizio Romano as well. Yeah, yeah. Quick, <laughs> it's, all, it's all kicking off. It's all kicking off. Right, boys. Um, of course, everyone listening, um, please do hit that. If you're watching on YouTube, sorry, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. All that good stuff it, it is much appreciated. And of course, keep streaming it on Apple and Spotify. Um, and comment down below, boys. Our first one back of the season. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Um, Who? Oh, it's got to be uh, uh, the King. Pot, the the King plays on Sunday. Oh, that's actually hard. Isn't the, it? the King plays on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that, Maz. Do that. Yeah, the King plays yeah. on Sunday. All right, cool. Yeah, comment down below on yes. YouTube. Yeah, the King plays. Yeah, yeah the yeah, King yeah. plays on Sunday. Um, so yeah, without further ado, we shall see you after the Newcastle game. Come in the Albion.